name under heaven which man can be saved. Amen. The name of Jesus. You think of all the names of bread of life, the Lamb of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Lord. Man. So we all that are here exercise a little discipline tonight because you're here. Amen. <laughs> right? That's right. I'm sure some of you might not want to come tonight for whatever reason. The old flesh wanted to stay home because you were comfortable maybe on that couch or whatever. Stacy's not her head. I'll deal with you later. <laughs> but we're here. And, you know, I, was, we did, I did a class, a couple classes at the men's the day. We talked about Paul, you know, in Romans 7. Why do I do the things I don't want to do? And, you know, and, and so, you know, there's times that we do things that we shouldn't do. But tonight, the old flesh wanted you to stay home, but you came, right? we got to discipline ourselves. we got to, the word says we got to train ourselves. We're going to look at 1 Timothy 4, 7. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wise tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. So in that, you know, that passage, Paul's telling Timothy, don't listen to the false teachers. He's telling them, pay no attention to what doesn't line up with the word of God. Paul's saying here, remain in the one true word. In that context, that, that's what he's talking about. But we all need one way, shape, or form to train ourselves to be godly. So he says, don't have anything to do with this or that, rather. And when he says that word, rather, he, he, it's a new direction ahead. Rather than doing this same old thing, rather than staying home on Wednesday night, rather than getting comfortable on the couch, get up and go to church. Rather than maybe being lazy on Sunday, rather than doing that, get up and, and go to church. Rather than not reading your word today, maybe you read your word today. Rather than not praying today, Rather pray, right? Amen. Amen. Instead, do something that's uh, don't do something that's not beneficial. Rather, do something that is beneficial. And he's saying that rather train yourself to be godly. Uh, before I came to the Lord, I didn't know anything about the Lord. And I was just explaining to the men today in the home. You got to train yourself. This we provide an atmosphere, but man, you, it's up to you to get in your Word. It's up to you to study. It's up to you to. Get a hold of it. You know, we do our best to train you and guide you. But man, you've got to train yourself. When you leave the home, you've got to train yourself. Uh, those of us who've never been to the home or serving the Lord, we've got to train ourselves. <coughs> On a daily basis, we've got to train it. The better you're trained, the better off you're going to be. Amen. If a football team didn't train, how good would they play? Not good. At all. They should be a football team. But they wouldn't be performing the way that they should. So the word rather offers us a change of direction. Instead of do this, do that. Rather, right? Instead of sitting at home, come to church. Amen. See, that word rather gives you an option. You just don't have to do what this old flesh wants to do. My old flesh wants to stay home on Wednesday night sometimes too. <laughs> right? My old flesh wants to do what it wants to do every day. Right? But i got to train myself. The option is to train yourself. See, it takes no training to go along with this world and everyone else. It takes no training. It takes no effort to just stop rowing and just go with the flow. But to get upstream takes effort. Right? It takes no training to take someone else's word for the truth. Right, come in here, listen to me, think I know everything, and then take it for that, man. Don't don't trust me. Take some notes. Go home and go over the word that I share with you. Because believe me, I've been corrected. <clears throat> don't take anyone's word for it. <clears throat> don't rely on anyone else to teach you. <laughs> teach yourself, right? Do what the Brians did. They took notes, they went home and they studied the word eagerly. And I don't go home looking to pick me apart. <laughs> Get you 20 different commentaries and might have to find something that might not line up. Right? But go home and go over that which that's a purpose of so for some of you taking notes, you go over those notes later. Train yourself to be godly. We all need to train ourselves to be godly. We all need to exercise this discipline in our life. 
we all need to invest in our relationship with the Lord. And when you train yourself to be godly, you're invested in your relationship. There's no better investment. I got a little retirement fund, and I don't even want to look at the stocks. I don't even want to look at the Dow. I, I get so depressed looking at that. That investment, if it keeps going the way it's going, it's not going to pay off for me. I've lost a couple years' worth in just the last uh, couple months. But if I train myself in this, that won't matter. Right? This is going to, this is, this, you can't put a price on the Word of God. We can't put a price on our relationship with the Lord. We can't put a price on what He's done for us on the cross. There's no way we can put a price on it. We all need to invest in our relationship with the Lord. So what's saying now, we all need to chew on some solid food. Hebrews 5.14 But the solid food is for the mature who by constant use, use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So as we grow in the Word, we exercise our spiritual senses and we develop spiritual discernment between good and evil. That's one of the benefits of training myself. That's one of the benefits of walking with the Lord that I'll have what this Scripture says distinguish between good and evil. But solid food is for the mature. See, as we grow in the Lord, we need to mature. We, we should not be at the same maturity level that we were when we came to Christ. And if we are at that same level, it's because we haven't disciplined ourselves and trained ourselves. We have not put in the effort to grow and mature in our relationship with the Lord because He's done, done everything that He needs to do for us. He went and crawled up on that cross and died for us. We just celebrated the empty tomb. He's at the right hand of the Father. He sent us the Holy Spirit. We'll be talking more about Sunday. We have everything that we need. The only thing that we have that's against us is this. This old flesh. All right. So as we grow in the Word, we mature. We all should have a goal to mature in the things of the Lord. You should have spiritual goals. We usually talk about it every January. Set some spiritual goals for your life. As you, January is a marker in time. Think back about the last year and how, how you grew spiritually, where you failed, where you didn't, and set some goals so that you can grow and mature. I don't care how old you are in here. The, the, the scripture says that we bear fruit even in the old age. So that tells me there's never going to come a time in my life that I stop maturing and growing in the things of the Lord and seeking the Lord. I never come to a time in my life where I say, well, that's it, Lord. This is as far as we're going. I think this, I'm done. Yet we all know somebody who's came to that point in their life to where, man, this is it. I'm not going to go any farther. I'll go this far with you, Lord. I'll let you take me this far, but man, I just can't do that. And therefore, you're stuck right there. we got to have goals. See, a baby will put anything in its mouth. That little dude, when he gets to crawling around, if you don't keep an eye on him, everything he sees is going to go in his mouth. Because he wants to taste everything. Everything's going to go in his mouth, right? A mature believer, an immature believer, will listen to any preacher on any radio or television show and not be able to identify whether or not they're speaking the truth in Scripture. Because they're infant, they're not mature. So the warning there was, hey, don't, don't listen to that stuff, right? If you're not mature in the things of the Lord, if you don't know any better, man, you'll listen. And, and you know what, man, I'll, I'll, there's times I'll be listening to people on TV because I like to listen to people preach myself. And they, they can take it and twist it just the way. And you think, well, you know what? That's fine. But if somebody that doesn't know, oh, man, that sounds like, man, that's, a, that's it. Because they don't know, so you got to be careful. Buy that miracle water. Buy that miracle water. Nineteen ninety nine. Send me a message on Facebook. Hold on. Ten ninety nine. Miracle water. Make your hair grow. We've all seen it. We'll make your hair grow. <laughs> don't 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 buy everything here. But if you know the truth, that the, the truth is down in you. Uh, if you meditate on the scripture, if you study it, right? Uh, if you memorize scripture, it gets down in you. 
And like I was telling one of the guys today, he goes, what, what? He goes, what, what's the deal when I, I read something yesterday and I remember it and I start reading something today and I can't even remember what I read yesterday. I said, it's in you. Don't you worry about it. You keep reading. It's in you. There's times that I'll be talking to someone and then there'll be a scripture come out of me that I read from the Old Testament or something. I might not remember the address, but it's the word of God and it'll come right out in the conversation. And I'm, well, I read that, so it's in me. Just keep reading. Get it down in you, right? Who by constant use, use have trained themselves to distinguish from uh, good from evil. So every time you get in the word, you're training yourself to be godly, which also gives you that discernment between good and evil. We all gotta, we all need to move forward into maturity, and that comes through the solid food. When you're uh, the baby's on the bottle right now, there's gonna come a day where that little guy's gonna start eating baby food. He's gonna move off that liquid to the baby food. Pretty soon he's gonna move into some real food. Pretty soon he's gonna be, as he matures and grows, his appetite's gonna grow. Naturally, he's gonna eat solid food. He's gonna be 15 years old. He's not gonna be on a bottle anymore. But yet, if you don't train yourself to be godly, you could be in the Lord for 20 years and still be on the bottle. And still be acting like an infant when things go wrong in your life. Have no spiritual maturity to deal with anything. And handling things uh, as an immature person and you're, you've been in the Lord for so long. The study of Scripture brings about self-discipline. Look at Psalms 119, 9 through 11. If you get anything out of this message tonight, train yourself in the things of the Lord. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. All right, so the word will guide you along the right path if you obey it. Scripture tells us don't just be a hearer of the word. Be a doer of the word. So how can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. So the path of purity comes from seeking God with all your heart. I will seek you with all my heart, he said, right? And this takes commitment to get where God wants you to be. He doesn't want half of your heart. I know a lot of people that gave God a quarter of their heart or a little bit of their heart. He wants all your heart. Because until you surrender all your heart, you're going to struggle with those things from the world. Until you surrender all your heart, you're going to struggle in life. You won't, you're, you're not going to be committed to mature. You're not going to be committed to walk with Him. You're not going to be committed to go where He calls you to go and do what He calls you to do. There's not going to be any commitment. He's got to have all your heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. See, when it's your heart's desire, you'll seek Him with everything that you got. Right. When He has all your heart, right? And through that, and through His Word, and once it gets down in your heart, it'll keep you on the right path. I have hidden your Word in my heart that I might not sit against you. The Holy Spirit will use that Word that's hidden in you to convict you. I don't mean to offend anybody in here. But some of us need to replace that sin that's hidden in our heart with the Word of God. Amen. That, that, that one sin that you got tucked down in there, that one that you're just not willing to let go of yet, that you need to pull out of there and bring before the Lord and say, man, Lord, help me with this, the one you're just not ready. You need to take that out. You need to get the word down in there. So that thing can't take root in there, right? You need to replace that sin that's hidden with God's word. So you might say, well, what part of the Bible should I study? Second Timothy 3.16 tells us. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Amen. So that the servant of God, that's what you are, the servant of God, may be thoroughly equipped for every good word. Amen. All scripture, right? From Genesis to Revelations is useful. What is it useful for? Teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. There's not one thing that goes on in your life. If I'm going to correct you, I should be able to take you to the Word of God. If I'm going to rebuke you, I should be able to take you to the Word of God and show you where you're wrong. Right? If I'm going to train you or teach you, I should be able to take you to the Word of God. This is what the same one Norm says. This is what the Word of God says. 
take you right to it. It's useful for everything. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created Christ Jesus, to do good works which he's prepared in advance for us to do. And it's the word of God that equips us for those good works. It's the word of God that will equip you. It's the word of God that you've got to get down in you, that you've got to discipline yourself and study and, and, and get in you. It's the word that's going to come out of you. When people come to me in the worst time or in the emergency or whatever, something's happened in their life, they don't need my opinion. They need the God's opinion. They need the word of God to come out of me. Amen. They need some encouragement from the word. So maybe I can share a scripture with them that they don't know. Hey, but God's word says... Right? So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Would you say you're thoroughly equipped today for every good work that God has for you? Some of you are shaking your head no. Well, that means you need to get a little more discipline. Because I'm here to tell you today that God has good work for each and every one of you. Amen. Mine just happens to be up here. Amen. Good work for each and every one of you to do. And if you're not prepared for it, you're not going to walk in it. You're going to walk right by it. Some of that work, you might never get another chance again to get in there. It might pass you by and you might, it might be gone and it might be too late for somebody. Some of that good work. We can fulfill the good work by being thoroughly equipped. we got to be in the Word. We cannot be thoroughly equipped if we're not in the Word. His word tells us that, right? We've got to train ourselves. We all need to do a little bit better job of this. I, I study all the time. I still need to do a better job. I can still do better. Self-discipline involves learning through experiences, right? Titus 2.12. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, which is, which is a chore, right? The same grace that saves us also trains us in the school of holiness. Grace is what teaches us, right? That same grace that saves us also trains us in the school of holiness. The things that I once said yes to, I, sound, I now say no to. Amen. Because I've trained myself, right? I, I now say no. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness. How do we know it's ungodly? Because if we're in our word, we know it doesn't line up with God's word. And if we, through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, he'll be telling you, hey, don't go that route. Hey, don't do that. And you say no to it. How many times do you wish you would have said no that you didn't? If you had to suffer the consequences because of whatever you didn't say no to, Right? I'm sure we can all think of something. But God's word explains what is ungodly. His word, his word explains what a worldly passion is. His word says do not love the world or anything in the world. That's what his word tells me. Amen. Don't love it. Don't get attached to it. The lust for wealth, power, pleasure, fame, or anything else that is essentially worldly. Don't have any desire for it, right? Said they're to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Remember, his word's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness, right? His word will teach you to live self-controlled and uh, godly and upright life. Amen. But you've got to be disciplined to study his word. And then once you study it, you've got to put that thing forth in your life every day. And you've got to walk it out in your life. You've got to just submit to the word. You have to have a relationship with the Word of God. you got to love it like you love God. you got to love opening that thing up every morning or every evening and getting in there and learning something. you got to love spending that time in God's Word. Because He left that thing for you, right? Love letter, man. From Genesis to Revelation, He left for you. Amen. And you got to love spending time in it. The odds are some of us aren't too much in love with that right now. That's just the odds because we're in church. There's seasons that I have to get in there and say, man, don't, don't get stale in that. Right? You go through those seasons, sometimes you feel God's distant. He's not distant. He's right there. Amen. But you've got to love His Word. And if you struggle in that, then you've got to ask the Lord, help me to love your Word. Bury your face in that thing. Self-discipline should transform the whole person. Second Corinthians. It should even control your thoughts. 
Tim 5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to make it obedient to Christ. So if we don't study the Word and train ourselves in the Word, then we'll never know if our thinking isn't lining up with God's Word. See, when we train ourselves, we begin to think the way the Lord thinks. <coughs> Our hearts transform to be like His heart, right? Our minds renew to, to think like He does. His will becomes our will. We mature in every area of our life. And then we can take those thoughts captive. We just say, is this a godly thought? We know what thoughts we're talking about. You know what thoughts you get in the day that aren't godly? That you start to meditate on for a minute? You might be a little hate. You might start hating on somebody that upsets you, right? That's not godly. You got to take that thing captive. You got to recognize that thought is not from God. It's not. It doesn't line up with His Word. God's Word says, "Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Not to sit around and daydream on how you're going to do them dirty, <laughs> right? Does my thoughts line up with God's Word?" Remember, his word says we're able to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. We're able to distinguish good from evil. We're able to have that discernment, right? Because the word's in us. Words are left to my feet, a light to my path. It, and I know God's word says whatever's true, whatever, whatever's noble, whatever's praiseworthy, whatever's honorable, think about such things. Don't think about this, this stuff that ain't godly. When I was first one in the home, I sat there thinking about things I shouldn't be thinking about until I read that scripture one day. I said, man, that scripture would pop in my head every time I start thinking about things I shouldn't be thinking about. Whatever's noble, whatever. I start just repeating that thing over in my mind. A hundred times if I had to until that thought went away. About ten minutes later, another one would come, come in the next way. Whatever's crazy, whatever's noble, whatever's time. Huh? <laughs> Boom, that one will go. Here comes another one. Oh, submit to God, resist the devil, he must sleep. Draw near to God, he'll, he'll draw near to me. Over and over, right? What did Jesus rebuke the devil with out in the wilderness? The word. So, what are you going to rebuke him with? Something you thought of? Better rebuke him with the word. See, when we renew the mind, it makes things clear. Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. See, the world wants to control your mind, but God wants to transform your mind. Because God knows one thing. If He can transform your mind, He can transform your life. We said it before here a while back. The world markets to us. We talked about that bull, that, that billboard with that beautiful looking cheeseburger from Carl's Jr. with the fluffy lettuce and the cheese is melted, the tomatoes all red and juicy, the bun is all perfect, and man, it's a beautiful cheeseburger. And man, you can go in that drive-thru and you man, and you get that thing, you unwrap it, it's all flat, and smushed. And you're like, what the? The world's always marketed to us. <laughs> trying to get in our thoughts, right? It, it, it causes us to do so. The word, the word does the same to us. It causes us to live a godly life. It causes us to say no to ungodliness. Right? We're marketing to you too. We're trying to get you to, to serve the Lord and seek the Lord. That's the purpose of you coming to church. We've got we to be careful. He knows if He can transform our mind, He can transform our life. And the way we become spiritually minded is by reading God's Word. As you spend time meditating on God's Word, memorizing it, making it a part of your inner self, God will gradually make your mind more spiritual. Uh, more spiritual. A transformed mind can discern what God's will is. A transformed mind can distinguish good from evil. A transformed mind will understand the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When He says, don't do that, don't go here, go there. It's only when you yield to the will of God that His power can take over and give us the willpower that we need to be victorious. Outside of the power of the Holy Spirit, we ain't going to make it. 
I tried to white knuckle so many things in my life before the Lord didn't last but about maybe an hour. It's about as much willpower as I had. But through the power of the Holy Ghost, it's like I'm plugged in all the time. I'm charged up. I'm ready to go. And it never gets down there. I never, I never have to plug in. I'm plugged in. And every time I get in this word, I stay charged up. I stay plugged in, right? A renewed mind is able to take every thought captive. A renewed mind is able to be led by the Spirit. No matter what hell you're walking through here on this earth. No matter what comes against you. I know that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Amen. I know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because His Word says it. So when all hell's breaking loose in my life, man, I stand on His Word. I'll always provide you a way out. No temptation sees you once come to man. God's faithful. He'll never let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He always provides you a way out. So when that temptation comes, you'll be looking for that way out. God's Word says it. But if you don't read His Word, you don't know His Word, man, you're in trouble. You're operating in your own wisdom. In your own strength. In your own power. Man. Ephesians 4.23 To be made new in the attitude of your minds. So this points to a complete about face in your thinking. A change from mental impurity to holiness. Holiness. We, that's our goal is to get to a place of holiness and righteousness with the Lord. A little bit better than we were yesterday. A little bit better tomorrow than we were today. Right? The Spirit of God influences the thought process to reason from God's standpoint, not from an unsaved man's standpoint. We begin to think like God. Anybody need a new attitude besides me? You want to know what God's thinking? Read His Word. That's exactly what God's thinking. You want to know what His plan is for your life? Read His Word. Read His Word. It'll even tell you in there what happens when you don't read His Word. It's all in there. Everything that you need is in there. And with that new attitude, you'll even be able to control your tongue, right? Psalms 141.3 Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. When we set a guard over the mouth, when we have a renewed mind, we can set a guard over the mouth. I don't talk the same way I used to talk. Right, Mom? Every other word used to be the F word before. My vocabulary has changed. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Hey, dude. Dude in the F bomb. That was my vocabulary. <laughs> See, when our mind is renewed and our heart is changed and we become more and more like Christ, we respond to things differently. We handle things differently. Matthew tells us in 15, 18, and 19, but the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart that defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. It's not what goes in, he's saying here. It's what comes out, which comes from the heart. And we often speak of the evidence of fruit in a person's life, and this will be one place where it will show how people respond show a lot of what's going on inside and what they're working with inside. So as, as our mind is renewed and our heart is changed, it'll change our behavior in many ways. And our heart won't defile us like it once did, right? But we've got to remember we're all a work in progress. And we have to remember that Jesus has done everything he needs to do so that we have access to everything that we need. Amen. And now we have some work to do. James 1.26 says it. Those who consider themselves religious, which we all know those that consider themselves religious, and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues, deceive themselves. And the religion is worthless. So you can say all that you want, how God's changed you and all that. You can act all holy and you can act all righteous. But if it's not genuine, your tongue will reveal it. Your tongue will reveal it. Yeah. Lord. Right? And then 
someone back in your car in the church parking lot leaving church and oh man then the real you comes out and you just got your, your whistle just got your covers got pulled right you just fake it on the outside but there, God will put you in a position one day to, to really show what's going on on the inside of you nobody's perfect right but what comes out of a man's mouth comes from the heart and the heart is deceitfully wicked above all. Right? You know the old saying, follow your heart? I'm here today to tell you, don't follow your heart. If you follow your heart, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Do not follow your heart. Follow the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And just so for the record, there's times that things come out of these lips that I ain't proud of either. It's an ongoing process. But you know what? I don't just settle, oh, well, that's just me. But no, that's something God wants. Hey, man, you need to sharpen it up. Amen. You need to repent of that. You need to move on. You need to ask for forgiveness, whatever. You need to keep trucking, but that's not acceptable. Amen. So you always got to realize that it's not acceptable. But there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? Amen. Thank God for His mercy and His grace. Be sure at times to extend some of that grace to yourselves when you fall short, because we can be our worst enemy. And lastly, we'll close with this. Self-discipline prevents God's discipline. 1 Corinthians 11, 31 and 32. But if, we, if we, but if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So to be discerning is to show insight and understanding of the things of the Lord. So if we uh, do things His way, things will be a little bit better for us, right? If we live our life the way. If we exercise our spiritual disciplines, if we read the Word, have a good prayer life, repent of our sins on a daily basis, we would not come under such judgment. See, you can discipline yourself so he doesn't have to discipline you, right? We need to live in a way like that. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. See, God's dealing with us as his own children. He loves you too much to, to allow you to stay the way that you are. Jesus didn't go all the way to the cross and bear all that he did and go through what he did for you to be that same old person that just saved. He didn't do all that just for you to go to heaven. Amen. He did all that so you could experience God's kingdom right here on the earth. Right? So chastising or discipline is God's way of dealing with his sons and daughters to encourage them to mature. It's not like a judge condemning a criminal, but it's like a loving father punishing a disobedient child. 2 Timothy 1.7 For the Spirit of God gave us to not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Everything we need to live the disciplined life was given to us the moment that we got saved. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. We have everything we need. The seed was planted. It's in us. We just got to exercise it, right? And I pray that we all get to a place in our life where we're walking in the Spirit and in that discipline. Amen? Amen. Amen. We want to say goodbye to those online. We're going to ask everyone to stand.